this is Debra and today we're visiting Marianne and Cole and they're on a property here it's uh, five acres uh, but the area that we're going to show you today is about an acre and a half Marianne and Cole built here they built their house here um, about four years ago and this whole garden it has come up in the last four years and the whole garden is like an edible paradise from the moment you drive up the driveway there are fruit trees there are everywhere you see there are pineapples there are fruit trees it's extraordinary so um, I can't wait to show you around and, and I'm going to introduce you first of all to Cole Hello. Hello Cole thank you very much for having us pleasure Cole's going to show us around the orchard and then we're going to meet up with Marianne as we go down the hill a little bit and we'll, we'll see another part um, of the garden today. Uh, Vanessa's filming. Thank you, Vanessa. Vanessa, can you just show a little bit here, just basically the orchard where we're about to go. And then we're going to... Looks amazing. And that's the view. Cole, that's an an amazing view to um it must be an absolute pleasure just gardening here every day oh there's a fair amount of work when we first got here about four and a half years ago this was just uh, an old dairy farm the blady grass was about this high cobblers pegs ground soil lantana you name it so all of this is is up to four years old so quite a bit of work's gone into it it's and it's just extraordinary to me. I can't believe that what we're about to see has all come up in the last four and a bit years. Yeah, the soil here is reasonable. It's um, it's a sort of medium clay and it's got a reasonable amount of depth to it. So it holds water fairly well, especially through the dry we just had, okay. uh, which, which is great. And um, it um, needs a lot of mulch. We've put the equivalent of about 350 trailer loads of mulch on the place wow. over that time. So, you know, you just can't have too much mulch. Yeah, I know. And we're going to have a look at that in a moment because that was one of the things I noticed when I walked around your orchard. Lots and lots of mulch. How many trees do you have here? Um, we've got, with the bush tucker trees, we've got conventional fruit trees and bush tucker trees, about um, uh, 320 different types. And, wow. um, and um, of which um, about a third of those would be what you'd call bush tucker trees. Okay, that's, uh, should we have a look? We can start yeah, well, we pointing can, them out. I can we see can, as well lots of pineapples. Have you um, got a special thing about loving pineapples? Um, no, we just had the ability to um, get a lot of tops from a person up at uh, the Green, um, up to the Glasshouse Mountains. And um, most of them are the smooth leaf ones, although we do have some of the rough leaf ones as well, which aren't really produced commercially anymore because they're, they're uh, very difficult to handle. So okay. we'll just have a quick look Great. Um, this at this small section down here. There's some interesting pieces. Uh, over here you can see a, a red and a pink dragon fruit. We need to turn around, Cole. We're not mic'd up, unfortunately, so yeah, we need a to... Red and, <laughs> red and pink dragon fruit, very prolific one. And this is an unusual one most people might not see. It's called a Peruvian apple. And I've, they split when they're ripe. And I've just got a couple here. They're, um, they're like a dragon fruit, only I think they're better to eat. They're uh, a little bit more crunchy than a dragon fruit. And where do they grow? Is that on here? They grow on here. On you can see, um, here's a big one at oh, the back here. And, just a couple of other unusual ones we've got here. There's a cinnamon tree and there's a cedar bay cherry over here. Um, blackberry jam plant, um, very slow growing, uh, but the fruit off those is, is very good. Um, got a wild currant here and a naranjilla. Just very spiky looking thing here. So what's your interest in these unusual trees? Are you? Um, we're just um, basically trying them out to see what okay. grows and what doesn't. And not everything grows. You do have failures. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll just see what the fruit's like, how it does in the district. Um, Great. 
And where are you sourcing them from, Cole? Because I know oh, that all over the place. We're um, members of the Subtropical Fruits Association, and um, I thoroughly recommend anyone that wants to learn a lot about fruits to uh, become a member of that. They're a very good organisation. We're a member of Boggy as well, and uh, a few other local okay. local groups. Boggy is Brisbane Organic Growers. Growers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go this way. We'll go into the orchard and start to see what's up there. Yeah. You can just talk us through as we walk that way, Cole. Yeah, there's, a, there's what's called a blue cherry. It's a, it's a native, um, a jambalan over there. So this is a bush tucker fig? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's a, a lily pilly type bush. Um, so just basically, mainly pineapples here, but we've got a a Malay apple um, and a chacha. Okay, so um, for the people that don't know, what Cole mentioned earlier about the pineapples is all of these have been planted from the top. So when you buy a pineapple and try to buy the ones that still have the tops and you cut the top off and you can plant them. And so that's how actually Cole's built up this whole pineapple garden. How many did you say there were? about 600. That's 600 pineapples. Okay, so um, I'm trying to do the same at home. I think I'm up to about eight pineapples. So I've got a little way to go, but I'm inspired by... We'll have to get you some tops. <laughs> okay. Um, there's a, uh, a plant that we've come through, through this way. Here we have a yellow jacona carver and abu, which is a South American fruit tree. A jackfruit. We've got about a dozen jackfruits in total here, um, and then a black sapote behind that. So most of the fruit trees you've got are concentrated in this area here, and then you've got some running down the boundaries of the property. Correct. Yes. Okay. And this is uh, the mulching uh, that Cole was speaking about earlier. Yeah, this was, this, is... this was weeds and kikia grass about this deep. And so what, we, what we've done, I, I initially started just mowed on a crisscross pattern, but it was too, too much and it would have necessitated using a lot of Roundup and we don't typically use any sprays or whatever here. We work pretty much on a permaculture organic basis okay. as much as we can. And uh, so what, what we do, mow it down, put down cardboard or paper which is um, disintegrated over time um, and then put mulch on top and of course the mulch gradually rots down and, and gets replaced over time but it, it really then creates a sponge for for water and every time it does rain and the last 12 months have been extremely dry here yeah. and this whole lot has survived pretty much with, with a little bit of hand watering but uh, mainly because of the mulching that and the was mulch. here yeah. and the clay, the clay soil as well of course. Yeah. Um, there's a pink mammoth custard apple. Oh, and I can see one, um, Vanessa, can you see custard apple hanging down there? See one right in the front here. Oh, there's three down there. Oh, there. And one there. You've got lots on here. It has. Oh, it's heaps. Yeah, for a very dry year, it's, yeah. done, it's done remarkably well. Are you hand pollinating any of these? No, I don't. Some... A lot, lot of people do, but yeah. um, I, just, I just leave it. I, we'll have a look at some bees that I've got. There's quite a few on the property as well. Yeah, that's, there's a lot on here. I've got a tree at home, but it's hard to put any this year. Um, Which is not surprising. Oh. This is a um, an Indian guava. It's a, a little like the conventional yellow wild guava around, but it's a much nicer one. Um, this time of year they're okay. The fruit fly tends to um, get them pretty badly through the, uh, the drive. Yeah, the, this is one that's dropped off. It's uh, a little rotten, you can see, but that's the sort of size 
but they grow too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, this mango tree, believe it or not, is only about four years old, so it's done quite well. It had possibly 600 mangoes on it um, at one stage, and of course most fell off in the dry. We ended up with 40 or 50, which is about all that it can support anyway. Yeah. But it's interesting to note, it's not actually more than about three metres tall. Three metres tall. Three metres tall. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. They do, do quite well out here. Oh, over the fence here, I've got some jackfruit. I was just planting it basically as a screen and I had to let the cows in there to when we were short of feed. But, um, and they've smashed two of the trees. There was a mountain soursop and a, and a South American sobo tree, um, which I, I think they'll come back okay. So. so it seems like you were running out of space here, like this, with your, um, how many trees did you say? Oh, about 300. About 300. <laughs> Every time I need some more space, I just take it from the cows. Just so. <laughs> Um, avocado, um, this, this is an interesting tree, it's a native, it's a peanut tree, it's a pod on it with some um, black seeds that when they're dry uh, taste very much like peanuts. Uh, there is another tree from South America called the peanut butter tree and we can have a look at that, it's, it's quite different and does taste like peanut butter. Um, just an ordinary little coffee plant over there, we don't process the coffee of it because it's too, too tedious. When we, when we bought the property, there, there was half a dozen citrus trees that had been struggling in all the weeds for years that no one had um, tended to. So I coaxed them back to life. Uh, what we've got in these first two are just the bush lemon rootstock. Uh, and I've left it there because the, um, the bush lemons are, are not bad lemons. Um, they're a bit of an extra. Over time, you can see that the mandarin part of this is starting to come back again, so over time it can take over. This is one we got full of water bush, Myoporium montanum. Um, allegedly, um, it's got some reasonable fruit on it, but we get to see. It's certainly growing very prolifically. Yeah. So, um, well, let's move, let's go through here and then yep. I'll ask you some more questions on this side. Yeah. There's so much to see here. I mean, we've we've got another mango. Yeah, um, uh, mango figs. Figs, for some reason, just do not do well here. Okay. Uh, yet down in Debra, a few people are growing them well. Uh, we can't seem to to manage that. Um, we've got a lot of odd things here. This this is called um, a salt bush. Um, you know, allegedly they have bush tucker berries on them. Is that something there, perhaps? Yeah, it looks like there's a little berry there. And um, this, is, this one up here is called the turkey bush. Um, allegedly can be used as bush tucker as well. So you've got the bush tucker food just to mix in here. Just, just mixed it in. It was whatever other. we got at the time. Um, there's um, a native rambutan here. Um, I'm not sure whether it's actually edible or not, but it's a nice tree. Regardless, you can see some, some fruit on it. And we were given a bean at uh, Brisbane Organic Growers, and um, I'm not sure it was a good thing to plant it because it's just gone rampant. And um, I'm not actually sure what bean it is. Um, so if anyone can identify it, that would be good. Looks like it might be a lab lab. A lab lab, yeah. So it'll probably get a snip, I think. Okay. There's a macadamia in behind there and a, and a um, joa in here. Do you find the macadamias grow well here? You haven't had any macadamias off them yet, but um, they, they grow well enough, yeah. Yeah. We've got um, this one over here is a native macadamia. Okay, That's, let's have a look at that one. That was the one that they propagated commercially. Uh, so there's one there. And another one here. So this is the bushnut, what they call bushnut macadamia. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So um, we just were able to get a few of those. The the um, this one here is a bit unusual. It's called a burdekin plum. Um, we've got half a dozen of those. 
Um, it does get a plum-like fruit, not great to eat by itself, but people make jam and uh, wine and things mm -hmm. like that out of them. Uh, the interesting thing was at the end of the dry when it rained, this was covered in flowers and this whole tree was alive with bees. Mm -hmm. Absolutely alive. There were thousands upon thousands of them. Uh, but it didn't set any fruit. I guess mm. the, weather, it, the weather wasn't good. Um, pomelo, this one. So the pomelo, that's or a little... pomelo, some people call it. That's like a grapefruit, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's uh, just a large version. More edible than a grapefruit. A locust. Uh, this one fruits really well here. Um, another little locust there. A joa. It's a beautiful looking cheese. Yeah, That's it's it. um, people have mixed success with uh, getting them to fruit, but it's a nice looking tree anyway. Um, Caffa lime. <coughs> Mainly used for flavouring. You tend to use the leaves more than the more than the limes. A little avocado. That's a Panama berry. Um, that, believe it or not, that tree at the back is probably only two and a half years old and it's probably six metres tall um, and it's been cut, a few, cut back a few times. I uh, get a nice little caramel flavoured berry on it. Uh, it's allegedly the world's fastest growing tree. Right. So you can see that they do quite well here. So Cole, while we're here, let me ask you a few questions. Mm -hmm. um, I want to ask you about your labels. Right. Um, Labels, although they appear a simple thing, can be um, tricky to get right. I've tried a few ver a few things in the past and then they wear off and, and then I can't yes. remember what the tree is or the plant. So what's as, your system? As we did, the um, we tried all manner of labels. We find the plastic ones last only a year. Mm. Um, these are very simple. It's just a piece of core flute that you can get from Bunnings, cut to shape. Use a paint pen, don't, which you can get from office works. Don't use permanent pens because they don't last. A paint pen, that one's probably a couple of years old, so it's lasted okay. And it's just simply a bit of tie wire, heavier gauge wire. Okay. Put it in a loop, push it down through the core flute, and then into the ground. And that's it. And they work well. Some people use cut up Venetian blind, okay. uh, things like that, but Certainly the plastic ones are a waste of time. Yeah, thank you for that tip. Yeah, the, if you put a lot of plants in, you think you'll remember it, but um, I know that I've gone back and I don't necessarily remember it. I'm kicking myself for not putting a label on there. It's very, um, it's very good to keep a bit of a layout of what gets planted where as well. And yeah. it, where it's organized here, you can, but in a, you know, a, a, just a, a collection somewhere in a garden, it's more difficult. Yes. But, in, in here we've got, um, well, first of all, there's a couple of just ordinary lemon trees. This, this is called a pink, an orange berry or pink lime bush. It's a bush tucker tree. Um, gets these little berries on it like that. They, um, they're edible. Um, I think you'd have to be fairly hungry to, to live off them. They've okay. got a bit of a turpentine type flavour. <laughs> But, right. um, but they are edible. Is there any of the bush food that, um, what would you recommend out of the bush food that's the most edible? Or are you still experimenting uh, with it? Experimenting. A, a lot of it is not well known and the reason being is because it's not very good. And um, some of the lily pillies are good. There's one down the front we just discovered the other day, which is excellent, um, with a very large fruit. We don't know what sort it is. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, the, the macadamia is the biggest success story with bush yes. tucker as well. Yeah. Um, finger limes, finger limes yeah. uh, are very good as mm -hmm. well. But we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, a lot of our fruit trees come from South America or originated in South America. There's a, an acerola, which is a, a cherry. The, the one behind it, this big one that's been cut back, is a native mulberry. It's not actually in the mulberry family, but it gets a, a little fruit on it and it, it fruited for the first time last year and they're the most delicious sweet fruits you can get. Okay. A little tedious to pick but but they're they're quite good. Got a couple of allegedly good finger limes ah, from a nice from a person that um, subtropical fruits. Um, 
uh, who was a, a very early member 30 years ago or whatever. And um, we've got two here, uh, an Elves Green and a Rick's Red that are supposed, supposedly uh, quite good. The You've got some rosellas still after Yeah, the rooting? rosellas pretty much seed themselves. They're, they're a bit of a nuisance. They, they will become weedy if you're not careful. This, this here is a Davidson plum. We've got three different types of these. There's the Purians, um, which, which this one is. The Jesiana or Molumbimbi one, which we'll see in a minute. And the smooth leaf. Um, I think they're the only three type. The, the three of the types that are available. Th this is a noxious looking plant. It's called a key apple or a kai apple. It's a oh, yes. South African plant and they used to plant it around the cattle corrals to keep the lions out. And, <laughs> and when you look at it, you can see you can why. See it, it has it's... got enormous spines on yes. it. Yes. Um, the fruit is quite nice. These haven't fruited. Uh, you need a, a few of them to fruit and we've got them here but these haven't okay. fruited yet but they are incredibly spiky yes like the world's worst bougainvillea i would think mm. i mean the leaves are beautiful it actually sort of entices you in and then there's yeah. these thorns that <laughs> entice yeah. you out very difficult to prune <laughs> so th this is probably a better look at this native mulberry okay. um you can see some little flowers coming on there but um they're, they're quite a palatable fruit could, could become a bit weedy if you don't control it, I think. This is a native quince. Uh, again, we haven't, we haven't had any fruit off that one, so I can't really comment on it. So Cole, which um, trees? So I'll just remind everybody that this is such a young orchard. I mean, it's four years or less that mm. you've planted here. So I can see we've got a lot of citrus um, that are actually fruiting at the moment. Uh, so what, what other things are you getting fruit-wise at the moment? Um, well, here, here's a Grumachama. We've, we've got a few fruit off the Grumachama, not, uh, not many. The, as you said, this, the citrus, the custard apples have done well in that time frame. Yeah. Um, of course, dragon fruit, uh, they, they fruit uh, very, very early on. And, um, and you've got the mangoes. So even in that short period, yeah. you've had you've actually had a lot of produce already. Yeah, that's, that's the, um, we just go down. Sorry. <laughs> Don't worry about walking on anything. But you can see that um, we tried to keep it's fairly natural with a lot of lot of leaf litter as the plants would have in their natural environment rather than an artificial environment. Um, this is a mandarin, that's more, it's probably 10 years old, this was one of the early ones. Okay. Year before last it was fantastic, last year because of the dry, we didn't get much off it. And the yes. few ones on it are very hard and, and woody and not really worth eating this year. So mandarins and oranges need a lot of water. Right, and you've got some living mulch yeah, growing we've, over we've here? Yeah, we've a little bit things. with some companion planting here. This, this is a... a um, Gallipoli rosemary, allegedly brought back during the First World War from Turkey. Um, some citronella, which is a geranium with, with a nice uh, aromatic. Yeah, thank you. Aromatic smell. Mm -hmm. And I can see you've got um, some leftover pumpkin pumpkin vines. Yeah, got some butternuts. Vines, one here um, at my feet. There's some nasturtiums growing here. Uh, this was all covered in sweet potato until the dry came along and you can see some remnants of it starting to come back. But Do, do you get any sweet potatoes from do. that or is it more just as a mulch? It's, oh, as a, yeah. it's really a mulch but we, we have got sweet potatoes from it. Okay. This, this one looks as if it's lacking something but it's not really, it's just this particular variety. Um, Jabota carbs here, we haven't got any fruit off a carb as yet they're probably a little young they they probably perhaps this year or next year might get some off them um and they believe this citrus tree here is probably only two and a half years old so wow it's a it's a That's... navel navel orange there's a marsh grapefruit there the comfort quartz are extremely prolific um, i mean we literally pick buckets and buckets of those and they go to uh, anyone that wants to make jam. 
Yeah. Tahiti lime. What's this over here on the side? You've got a couple. So we're over on the side of the property now, and this is a fence line here. Although that that's still your property with the cows, I know, but the that's side right. of the orchard anyway. And um, what are these that you've put in here? Well, we uh, this was a very nasty piece weed-wise here, and um, it's pretty hard to mow. So I do. What I did is I planted this tree called the popcorn cassia. Which is, that popcorn is a, cassia? Which is an yeah. extremely fast growing tree. Tastes or smells very much like popcorn. Oh. It's not edible. It's like but absolutely like popcorn. And uh, it grows very quickly and provides an environment for other things to grow under. And similarly okay. pigeon pea, there's some pigeon pea planted in here. Okay. And some pinto peanut. And it, it just basically stifles out all the weeds. And okay. So and what, is it a windbreak as well? Did you have an issue? It's a bit issue? of a windbreak. It's, you know, just a bit of a food forest. There, there's another Davidson plum. This is the Mullumbimbi plum um, variety of it. There's a, a Loganberry apple, which is a, a local bush tucker tree here. A bit of Moringa. Um, there's Illawarra plums. There's four of them here. Sometimes called a plum pine. Um, they, they're quite a edible fruit. Um, Panama berries, of course, a couple of Malabar chestnuts in there. Um, we just passed this beautiful native beehive, Cole. Um, is, is this the only beehive you have here? No, this is, this is one. This is the only native bee one I've got. Um, it's only been here six months or so, but the bees are quite happy. Yes. They're, um, I do have a a big hive of European bees down the other end and certainly want to get some more. But it's They're a beautiful addition to a garden anywhere in an orchard. Beautiful. They are. Yeah. This, if you want to, just a quick one. This is called a Miller Miller vine. I grew up in a little place called Miller Miller in North Queensland. And um, it's it's a native plant that gets some uh, edible fruit on it. So Although this, this one hasn't yet. So cold. Did you just say you grew up in Millamilla? Hmm. It's a little um, dairy area, isn't it? Not so much now, but no. it was at the time, yeah. So there's a nice connection. So my mum actually grew up in Millamilla. They had an old dairy farm there. Oh, yes. Yeah, so uh, we went back there and visited um, some years ago and had a look at the old um, spot where she used to live. And Very good. Yeah, that's a nice connection. So um, we've, we've sort of ended up... We started at the top of the orchard and we've come around to here. There's still so much more in this garden. I mean, it's going to be really hard to capture it on video. As I said, everywhere around their property, there's something growing that's edible. And you can see even what Cole's just covered this morning. It's just, we can see all the native bees flying around, <laughs> Vanessa. Um, it's just really, it's just a snippet of what's actually here. But in a moment, I'm going to introduce you to Marianne. So Marianne, would you like to come in here as well? You can stay with us, Cole, if you like, but yeah, we'll um, can take your book. And what I'd like to say, first of all, is just um, how I first actually learned about Marianne and Cole's garden was that I would see Marianne, your name popping up um, on lots of community garden groups and, and um, the like, basically offering food to people and, and offering seedlings and saying we've got lots of kumquats or we've got dragon fruit. And I just kept seeing your name popping up and I thought, okay, this is a garden that I really want to go and see. So although your garden is only like four years old, you are producing a lot of food already and giving it to the community. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah, a lot of people actually come and do um, pick your own. Yeah. as well and um, we've done some swaps over the time and we got some plants yesterday from a friend for some that we've given them and yeah I think the, and quite I think a, and the second some... year we were here we must have given away two or three thousand kilos of pumpkins wow. uh, they, they were growing everywhere here so uh... and some of these trees came from Vanessa's garden they did I think I met Marianne and Cole through a gardening group we yeah. did yeah yeah, yeah. 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 And when I, I popped in last week to have a bit of a wander around and there were a couple of people here and they left with buckets of um, kumquats and I left with some, um, what did I get? I got a white and a green choco and uh, uh, bath scrubbers. 
Yeah, the loofers. The loofers. Oh, yeah, loofers. the kids had yeah. lots of fun unpeeling those. And, yeah, I suppose that's another thing that we really love and why we're wanting to do this garden trail is that gardening is we garden for ourselves and we also garden for our community. And you're both really demonstrating that in such a beautiful way here. So um, I thought maybe we could finish this tour because I know that we, we really can't see the whole property. As I said, there's, there are trees everywhere, but I thought if we finish this little section down here, we can have a look, Marianne, where you've, where you've planted some, um, some vines. So this is your, your system for growing, growing things vertically. Except that it's winter now and, and uh, all our summer squash and, yes. and gourds and all that sort of stuff aren't actually growing at the moment. Yes, so it's not um, the best growing can, time, but we can, can see actually walk, the setup. If you walk that way, you can okay. see some of the... Um, so this top one here is uh, grapes, mm -hmm. uh, passion fruit, dragon fruit. What else? Um, mainly that. Mainly that. While, while we're at this end, this is a Rolinia. If anyone's interested, it's a South American uh, custard apple relation. And oh. comfrey, comfrey. We grow quite a bit of comfrey. It's it's very good for sprains, abrasions. Um, the Romans mm. used to use it in their medicinal compounds, and um, and uh, it's also very good in the liquid manure we make, which we might talk about. Yeah, later. we're going to go down and have uh, a look at that. Soon. Quite very very full of nutrients for plants. The um the great. Do you know what um, type? Do you remember what type? Because where we are, we're in subtropics. Um, four or five different ones. Along oh, there. okay. You don't know. Yeah, they're mainly um, the ones that do best here are the Isabellas. Uh, we find um, they're not a great grape to eat because they're very seedy. But um, the standard Chardonnays and and uh, Shirazes don't do great here, which you yeah. probably expect. Okay, we have them, but they don't. We, we have them, they're but, not, they, it's but not, they're not. They're not great. We can grow a lot of things here, but. Um, there are also a lot of things we don't grow so well. But grapes um, are one of those that are a little bit harder to grow. This is our jicama or jicama if you're in Australia. In Australia. Uh, underneath, they're also known as the Mexican ground apple. Uh, underneath there, there'll be apples about that big. Um, you dig them up. The basic problem is that the seeds and the flowers are actually poisonous. Okay. Uh, so you have to be very careful with them. Um, what are they and like? So when you dig up an apple, are they like an apple? They're very like an apple. Oh, um, right. I, we, I grate them in, in instead of green um, pawpaws. Or there's one, that's only a small one. That's a very small one. They do, they will grow up to 20 kilos. I've grown one here about as big as a basketball. And um, they're, wow. they're very crunchy. They're called a ground apple. When we lived in Tucson in the US, which is very close to Mexico. With a spray um, The... The Mexicans use a lot of them in their food. Yeah, you can, oh, we didn't bring a spoon. You can eat that as a... As it's just a like a crunchy apple. Yeah. Okay, and normally otherwise, um, would you peel it? Yes. Is that yeah. how you would normally yeah. sort yeah. of access it, like an apple peel it yeah. and then slice it up? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. We'll try that later. Uh, yeah. This is a very small loofah. And when they're that size, you can actually eat them in like a zucchini. Mm -hmm. uh, when they get to the big size, it's when you make your um, bath sponges out of them. So this is what I took home when I visited last week and took it to the kids and they had fun peeling, <laughs> the peeling the sides off. Did they get the seeds out? This. And they did. Really seemed to know that there were seeds inside. I didn't know. Oh, so you can see that just... they're, they're very sponge-like. This, this one's a little old. But... Has a potential to become very weedy unless you can control the seed dispersion and These jack beans is what? Yeah, these are a, sometimes called a jack bean or a sword bean uh, they grow these ones being winter are, are, are on the way out but uh, when they're small so a few few inches long uh, they're very good diced up for beans they're um Eat the they, they, right. and, but they must be cooked because they do have a cyanide compound in them and, okay uh, which Cassava has as well. We've got some cassava down there, and it's grown very widely. I think 400 million people in the world rely on cassava for their daily sustenance. And uh, you can make flour and whatever out of it, but again, you have to process it because it has a cyanide compound in it as well. It's where tapioca comes it's from. It's tapioca. Mm -hmm. 
So what was this bean again? Did you say sword bean? It's called a sword, a sword bean. Okay. And there is a variety called a jack bean. Okay. But they will grow much, much bigger than that. Wi widely okay. used through Asia. Okay. And what else have we got down here? Oh. I know it's not um, the best time of year, but oh. it's an incredible setup. You've got here three lengths like this. You can grow a lot. But, oh, that's Chile Cayete, Mexican, another Mexican melon. Um, you can either use it um, when it's small as a vegetable, mm -hmm. slice it up like a zucchini, or when it's older, you use it as a salad plant. And I just told you the wrong thing. Oh, use it right. when it's big, when they're vegetables and small as a salad. All oh, right. Or if you've got too many, the cows like them. The cows love them. <laughs> <laughs> um, more loofers. Now these are the um, angled loofers rather than the smooth, smooth loofer. Um, the yep. Small bitter melons. Bitter melons. Yeah. That's used. They grow much larger than that. That's that's a young one. Is this what you gave me the other day to try? That was like a cucumber? No. Oh, okay. No. <coughs> no that was a kunai. No. What's, What's that one? On this side that's here. A, Is that a bigger? That, that's a looper. Oh, that's, that's another looper. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay, so the loofers look like they're good to have, but they're weedy, as yes. you said. So once you've got them, you've got a lot of them. Yeah, yes. just... You need to give them away. The, so. you, or or um, the ones here, don't leave them lying around. Perhaps burn them in your, in your bonfire. Okay. We, we don't burn much stuff here. Uh, most of it just gets chopped and dropped, but stuff which is very spiky, like rose cuttings or citrus, we tend to, to burn. Mm -hmm. Old fashioned Cape gooseberries. And how do they do here for you? Very well until the um, striped potato beetle comes and decimates them. Ah. So down, these ones just go wild, are wild. Yep. Um, down the bottom where we get the ones that we actually eat. I've got them because we've got them netted. Okay, okay, this here is the Peruvian um, peanuts. Inca wrap. Inca, uh, sorry, Inca, 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 Inca nuts. Oh, there it is. Wow. Okay, one. another one that's poisonous unless you've got all the oxaluses in them. Um, there's there's a dry one. It's um, They're very, very leathery and very hard work to get the nut out of. But when you do, um, they're quite nice to eat. Well, you roast them first. You, ro you roast them. Mm -hmm. But they're, if you think macadamias are hard, uh, they, these are worse to get nuts out of. <laughs> they're always not worse. Oh. Let's have a look at your dragon fruit here. And have a look um, at pepinos too. So these pepinos will grow, um, you've probably had them right along yeah. here, have you? Yeah. yeah. They've died back. They're yeah. not, they'd normally be about this but, high. Yes. And, uh, and they have sort of like a rock melon type fruit. Correct. Yeah. And they're so, quite nice. Definitely worth having. Okay, let's let's look at this dragon fruit and then we might wrap it up and we'll go and look at some other parts of the garden in some shorter videos. So this looks like a good way to grow the dragon fruit. Yeah, just it, a, it's just on an on an old fence post. Okay. Don't don't use treated fence posts, just ordinary old hardwood fence posts. And um, this, this one's very prolific flowering, but doesn't set many fruit. It's, um, it, it's uh, for whatever reasons, even if you hand pollinate it. So some of them like the one up there, just set fruit regardless, this one won't. Well, having said that, the biggest dragon fruit we've got is off this one. It was nearly a kilo, um, but. Okay, so it doesn't have very many, but you can see Vanessa, there's one over there that's um, still full of fruit now. So let's go over there and we'll just um, have a look at those. This is good, you can actually see this one where you've planted it on the side, it's growing up and you've just um, secured it a little bit until the top. Yes, until it until it gets its roots into the post. Okay. And then See you've just this. got a bar, a, tip, a horizontal bar there at the top just to hold it. Correct. And you always want ants on your dragon fruit. You want ants. You want ants. ants. What does it mean to have ants? They seem to help somehow in pollination. I don't know what mm -hmm. it is, whether they attract something else that pollinates it or whatever, but every single dragon fruit that works is covered in ants. Right. And when we've got dragon fruits that don't have any ants on them, you don't seem to get anything. And when do you pick these? Do you have birds come? 
Yeah, because we'll, the crows, we'll find if they leave the, them the too long. The crows will bore a hole in that and ruin it. Yeah. Um, they're, they're ready to pick now, and uh, you probably leave that a day or two. And um, starting to... very, very easy to pick. Because we've got just basically a dozen on the kitchen bench already. Twist them off. Right. Will they ripen if you pick them too early, or you, you need to let them ripen on the tree? I find <coughs> you've got a little bit of colour on them. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Not completely green. So yeah. Red. Most and fruit, most fruit you see that this one's been there too long and they'll start to split. Yeah. But that that's a reasonable sized one. Yeah. It's, um, it's good to know because we've got a dragon fruit growing up in it, just inside a tree that we've got, and it's actually really hard to harvest. So it's, it's good to know how to actually set it up properly. And also we find that by the time we get to them, then a bird's got. So we're leaving them a little bit too long. Correct. So there's... There's a fine line there of knowing when to get to Possibly them. bag them if you had access to them, but you're better off just picking them when they get a bit of colour and and, um, they're, and they're extremely easy to grow. You just basically take a section, put it in the ground. I've never seen any that have failed. Extremely easy. So when you say a section, just cutting? Yeah, just, you've just got from cut here? off there or yep. cut off one of these larger ones and just put it in the ground. Put it in the right way around. Some people plant them in the reverse direction. Uh, and um, they grow really well. Great. And take no looking after, drought tolerant, <laughs> which you'd expect because they do come from a desert area. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> thank you, Marianne and um, <laughs> Carla, wandering off already. I mean, you can see what a spectacular place. What I really wanted to get across here was I think so many people have this dream about getting a property and, and planting it the way that both of you have. And I wanted to show how much you've done in four years and how much food you're already producing and and such an incredible um, community spirit as well by giving and giving plants to the community you're really um, encouraging lots of us to keep growing so um, I thank you for that and thank you for showing us around your garden even though we've only seen a small section but it's just it's an absolutely beautiful place to come so Thank you. And um, we're actually going to go and look at a few other um, little gems in the garden and create a few other um, small videos that we'll put up on YouTube. Um, I've had the privilege of seeing a fantastic uh, system that Cole's got going uh, with a liquid fertilizer that he creates with herbs and cow manure and in these big jobs. So we're going to go and have a look at that. And any questions you have, please post them up. And um, Cole and Marianne will um, answer your questions and we'll keep sharing the knowledge between us and keep encouraging us to grow a little bit more food in our own backyards. So thank you and catch you next time.